Hey, what's going on everybody? Stan One Camera Guy, I'm back again with another video for you. I wanted to go ahead and talk about, or have a discussion about the Canon EOS R5 overheating situation. And, and you know, and kind of figure out whether or not it's a big deal or not. I know it is to some folks and, and to some not really a big deal, but let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. I'll have some sort of comparisons to, to Sony. Uh, because Sony's not uh, new to the situation, and so we can kind of get a, uh, kind of that comparison going. So let's go ahead and get started with that in this video. So uh, this document here sort of leaked out to some degree. I don't think it was a leak, but it was provided to some folks who were reviewing it, and it was basically illustrating that the camera has limitations on its recording capability. I was not surprised about this personally. I wasn't surprised or I wasn't shocked at all. Uh, I think people who are assuming that it could record longer than that, I don't blame them either. That's because the marketing wasn't doing a good job. When the marketing was coming out, it's like, oh my God, it's going to record 8K and all this stuff. Some folks that were a bit reserved, they were saying, yeah, it's going to be limited. There's folks that already knew that this was bound to happen, especially in a, a compact size body and trying to record at such a high bit rate, it's gonna produce heat in the camera. And the Sony folks aren't new to this, all right? The Sony people, we've already been dealing with this for a while now. But it looks as if you can get at least 20 minutes of 8K recording, 8K. I don't know about you, but 20 minutes is not bad. 20 minutes isn't bad. I am playing the devil's advocate here. I wanna let you know, would you want more recording time? Absolutely. Who wouldn't wanna be able to record a full, at least 30 minutes of recording in 8K? But I'm just, in my head, there's, there's no other options right now at that price point. So you're getting 8K raw. I mean, 20 minutes of 8K raw, that's fantastic. I don't know if you remember back in the 5D Mark II days when Magic Lantern was around, right? With the whole raw video recording. That thing was a mess. Do you, if you remember that, let me know in the comments about the CF cards, getting a fast CF card, computer bay cards, being able to record uh, some sort of raw, or the DNG raws, and then converting it and using it in your video. Man, it was so, it was a fun time. But at the same time, it was it was kind of frustrating. It was really hard to use it in a consistent environment. But now, if you look at it, we're getting 8K raw in a body. And that's what, when did the cameras come out? I don't know, it's been like, what, eight, eight years now or something like that? I don't even know. Time flies. But if you take a look here as well with the 4K 60P, we're looking at 35 minutes uh, and then, but that's, but that's with two clicks, right? You gotta stop it and start it again, which is silly. And in the 4K 30p, 30 minute recording. The cold reboot, or the cold start, uh, is very interesting here, but it makes sense. Depending on what your ambient initial temperatures are, it's going to determine whether or not you get more or you get less of the given 20 minutes or so of that recording time or variability. But just know that when we were shooting on the Canon uh, Sony side of things, when it overheated, it overheated. We could either switch the battery out and that would help. Uh, we could flip the screen out, that would help. We did as much as we could to help prevent it from overheating, either from switching from 4K to 1080p, which I've had I've had to do in the past with these stinking Sony cameras in the past because I wanted the best quality I could get, okay? So I wanted 4K. And I shot at 4K knowing that I risked the fact that at some points you could go back, you would lose it. You'd have to go to 1080p and it's happened. It's happened. You know, I've had uh, the use of it and all of a sudden overheating shows up and it shuts down, switch over to 1080p and you can get by just fine. But it was always pushing that envelope, right? Being able to push that envelope and I think that's what's gonna happen with this particular camera as well. That's just my gut feeling. People are gonna push it to what it can do. Um, based on what it's given. So that brings me to an interesting discussion point here. Canon and Sony in this regards. It always seemed like Sony never really acknowledged the overheating until that whole debacle happened with the A9 thing and all that stuff. We won't go into that detail. Some of you remember that, some of you don't. But it never seemed like they were always addressing it as much as they did. But now with their current cameras, like their 6600, their A7R4, 
I've done some tests with, with overheating and those cameras don't have any issues that I've seen. They record on it. So I've record them with confidence. Even like the A7R 3 even with the A9, with the newer firmware, they all work really well in 4K without having any issues. So it seems like Canon, I mean, Sony did a really good job of addressing those issues there. Here, what Canon's doing is very interesting. I don't ever recall Sony doing something very specific to this specificity where it states that you get this many minutes of recording. Maybe they did, maybe they don't. I don't remember too well, but let me know if they did have a document like this. But it seems like Canon is doing a pretty good job of having this out there. Granted, they're a company. They're not going to show this to you in their promotional video, which is what's really funny. If you recall, in one of the promotional videos, they show someone recording like an 8K, I think, at, at a wedding or they're trying to do some sort of wedding clips. I'm like, 20 minutes shooting a wedding? <laughs> That's not gonna work, okay? That's just not gonna fly. But maybe you need some of that or that 4K 120 FPS. Now it's funny, they don't even mention 4K 120 on here. Maybe they just don't have enough data, but I'm assuming that thing is gonna, probably gonna get you less than 20 minutes, probably, at times. So very interesting scenario for that. Um, but let's continue on. So Sony, I didn't really ever see them give very specific, you know, specific situations with how much recording time, but at least Canon's doing that for you. So those of you who had this really big bubble, like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be able to shoot a feature film in 8K, that's out the water, all right? It's not gonna easily happen. But it doesn't mean that people won't do it because I remember with the 5D, people made it happen. You know, and like I said, it's not, people will find a way. That's just how it is. People will always find a way uh, and give them the tools and let them figure the rest out on their own. And that is where I need your thoughts on this too is do you want the manufacturer to give you every little ounce that the camera can do or you want them to hold it back? Because I've seen people say, why even give it 8K? Why even give it 4K 120 if you can't handle it very well? Just give it the best features that it can sustain. And my opinion personally is that I would rather have everything the camera can do even though it's limited. That's me. Let me know what you are down below, whether you would want it to be restricted. Because if my camera could record 6K, so let's say even with, um, you know, A9 over here, if this could record 6K, which it probably can, even if it could only do it for a 10 minute burst, I'd like to have that option. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you just like to have the option if you could do it or not? So just because it has the option doesn't mean you have to use it. Granted, they might use it as a selling point, which is what uh, Canon's doing, but they're giving you at least 20 minutes, 20 minutes of recording. So like I said, people are gonna find solutions to that. Trust me, there's gonna be attachments, things like that that are gonna come out for it, and people are gonna find a workaround for that specific case to be able to shoot in 8K RAW on that camera. All right, so here's the other argument, the people that are against this, and I, and I agree with them too. You're buying this camera, $38.99. It's a pretty expensive camera. You're expecting it to work in a professional environment. Now, it's not like a 1D series camera. It's a 5D series camera so from the looks of it, right? But at the same time, it's like a flagship camera. There's nothing, on the, there's nothing around it that can compete with it. So you see this camera and you're thinking, I'm gonna shoot weddings at 4K 120. I'm gonna shoot weddings at whatever or whatever environment you're gonna be in. And then you find out that it overheats. I understand that because I've dealt with that situation and you wanna make sure that you're not risking it all. So that when you're using the camera and you're out there on the field that it's not gonna overheat and shut down on you. That's the last thing you wanna worry about. So the argument can be made that that's not what the intent of the camera is. If you need prolonged recording time, that's where they're pushing you towards their cinema cameras or their other options that are out there for you. But if you wanna live on the cutting edge and you wanna use that particular form factor, a smaller body, then you're gonna have to play with fire. A lot of people do that, right? They're willing to play with fire because they don't wanna spend the extra money and they want that form factor of that camera. And that's what this camera is offering to you. In terms of everything else with the features of the camera, it's fantastic. Photo-wise, it looks like it's great. 
Um, you're gonna get some video features, but because it doesn't have that unlimited recording option, it doesn't seem as if it's been meant to be a prolonged use case camera. It seems like this will be an issue addressed in their next iteration. I think we're gonna have to wait another generation in order for it to be sort of corrected, but it seems like in this generation, you're just not gonna see it. Like I said, Sony did a really great job of addressing it in like the A7R4, the A6600. I recorded what, three and a half hours straight the battery died, okay, that's what died first. I've had my A7R4, so I'm using an A7R4 right now as sort of like the, the camera here interfacing with OBS. I've had it on for a week by accident. Like I just left it on, I didn't make a video because you know, you know how things are going lately, but I left it on for a week, camera never shut down. I've had times when I've had the 6300 plugged in somewhere and it'll give me an overheating indicator when it's on live view. It'll, an indicator will come on and it'll shut down. A7R4 a whole week, on, never shut down. Insane, literally insane. It scared the crap out of me, but it's working just fine. So that's where it's at. And, and again, with the whole professional side of things that I wanted to mention again, it is important if you're in a professional environment, something that you can't risk losing, if you're shooting like a wedding and you don't wanna miss a particular shot, then you don't wanna, you really don't wanna use the 8K option, okay? Bad idea you probably are gonna wanna use a 4K 30P option. It's gonna be pretty safe, or even 4K 60 is gonna be somewhat safe. But people are gonna have to test it out as they go along. But in my opinion, is the overheating a big deal? As long as you know what you're getting into, I don't think it's a big deal. As long as you know what you're getting yourself into, there you go. So before we conclude, again, let me know. Do you want the manufacturer to give you every little bit out of that camera? So for example, maybe you had the A7 III. Okay, it's not an A7, it's an A9, but what if they could do the 6K, which they probably could, but at the risk of it overheating it after 10 minutes? Of course, who wouldn't want that? Give me every little bit of options out of the camera, even though there's limitations. Just let me know what they are. I'll make the decision myself. Right, and that's what they're doing here for you. I just think the marketing, they're using the 8K as a marketing stream. They're still giving you a lot of features in this camera. People are just gonna have to work around it. That's just, that's just gonna be the case. In certain professional environments, you probably don't wanna use this. But again, people will test it out when it's out and they'll get that all figured out for you and then you can decide if it's gonna work for your workflow. We just have to wait and see. And then with Sony, uh, considering that they've been dealing, they've been kind of working on the whole overheating thing, I think they're definitely gonna knock this, the A7S III out of the park with the overheating situation, they'll get that kind of resolved. So that's me crossing my fingers there. If they can get that worked out, we're all set. We're all set. So wait, <laughs> I mean, unless you got an important thing, I mean, there's no reason to pick up the this EOS R5 at this very second, unless you are particular Canon. But if you're thinking of a switching over, just wait. It seems like they're gonna make the announcement at the end of July. So that's gonna do it for me guys in this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and who knows when the next video will be. I'll catch you later, bye.